Hello and welcome back to The Crime Reel. For today's true crime narration, we shall be looking at the life and extensive crimes of Tommy Lynn Sells. Tommy was born in Oakland, California on the 28th of June 1964. He was born along with his twin sister Tammy to Nina Sells, a single mother who already had three other children by the time the twins were born. When the twins were just 18 months old, Tommy and Tammy contracted meningitis. Tommy survived, but unfortunately, Tammy passed away as a result of this illness. His sister's tragic death did, however, lead to the only time in Tommy's life that he would describe as happy. He went on to live with his mother's aunt, Bonnie, who would look after him for the next few years. Bonnie described him as a happy, playful child and his favourite activity was riding his tricycle up and down the street. During this period of Tommy's life, his mother, Nina, never visited him and as a result of Great Aunt Bonnie began to look into officially adopting Tommy. This action got Nina's attention. She took Tommy back from Bonnie when he was five years old and Bonnie was never allowed to visit him again. This was the beginning of dark times for young Tommy. Nina was negligent and Tommy was mainly left to fend for himself. From a very young age, he began to skip classes and act out in school and eventually began to start using alcohol and drugs. At the age of eight, Tommy was introduced to a man by the name of Willis Clark who would set Tommy off on a path that would ultimately lead to so much pain and devastation. Willis was a man from a neighbouring town who took a keen interest in Tommy. He sent Tommy gifts, took him out for trips and even spent nights with Tommy both at his own home and at Nina's house with the other children. Willis was later convicted for sexually assaulting children with Tommy being one of his victims. Tommy claimed that his mother knew of the assaults and never did anything to try to stop them. He would later state that reliving his own experiences and trauma played a significant part in his crimes over the years. Tommy dropped out of school, spending his time drinking and getting high. When Tommy was 13 years old, his fractured family shattered completely when he climbed into his grandmother's bed naked and later then tried to sexually assault his mother. Just days after these two incidents, the family packed up and abandoned Tommy without telling him that they were leaving or where they were going. 13-year-old Tommy was left completely on his own. Tommy said that he couldn't deal with this abandonment and attacked the first woman he saw, pistol whipping her until she lost consciousness and then running away from town. He travelled across the states by hitchhiking and train hopping, making money doing odd jobs and begging on the streets. In 1981, with Tommy now 17 years old, he was reunited with his family. However, it was to be an extremely short-lived reunion after Tommy attempted to sexually assault his mother, Nina, for a second time. She once again kicked him out of the house. Tommy was back on the streets again and he returned to his nomadic lifestyle of train hopping and odd jobs. At the age of 18, he became a father after a woman named Cindy Hanna gave birth to their son. Cindy's family strongly disapproved of Tommy and made things difficult for him to stay with Cindy and their child. As a result, in July 1983, Tommy left town once again but not before a man matching his description was seen leaving the home of Thomas and Colleen Gill, who were found along with their four-year-old daughter beaten to death. In May 1984, Tommy was convicted of stealing a car and sentenced to two years in prison. Whilst he was in prison, he became a father for a second time after Nicole Snow gave birth to their daughter. He was paroled in February of 1985, but over the following years spent time in and out of prison, 
on various parole violations, public intoxication and theft charges whilst continuing to drift between US states. In May 1992, now living in Charleston, West Virginia, Tommy was begging on the streets when a 19-year-old woman named Fabienne Witherspoon offered to feed him a hot meal at her home. She asked him to wait outside while she went in and prepared something for him. But when she came back from the kitchen, he was standing inside her house. He grabbed a knife and attempted to sexually abuse her, but Fabienne fought back, managed to get the knife off of Tommy and stabbed him, catching him in the liver and the kidney. Tommy hit her over the head with a piano stool and Fabienne lost consciousness. Tommy fled the scene but ended up in the hospital due to his injuries where he was arrested once again. Tommy was subsequently convicted and sentenced to between 2 and 10 years for malicious wounding. The sexual assault charge was dropped. It was during this time that he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and also married for the first time. When he was released from prison, his wife, Nora Price, was waiting and the couple moved to Tennessee in May 1997. However, it didn't take Tommy long to leave his wife and return to his nomadic lifestyle, working as a ferris wheel operator for a travelling carnival. Meanwhile, his wife Nora Price gave birth to Tommy's third child, a son whom she gave up for adoption. In October 1998, Tommy married Jessica Levery, although this marriage was not legal due to him never having divorced Nora. He continued to be arrested for relatively minor crimes, such as public intoxication and threatening behaviour. In 1999, Tommy became friendly with the Harris family while living in Del Rio, Texas. They attended the same church and Tommy would often visit Terry Harris to ask for marital advice and to spend time with Terry's wife, Crystal, and also their son and two daughters. It was during this time that another family and friends of the Harrises, called the Searles, were also planning a move to Del Rio and Terry Harris offered to help them. On their way to pick up some of their belongings, Terry, Pam Searle and her boyfriend, Doug Luca, stopped by a bar at the edge of town to fill up on petrol and here they bumped into Tommy. Terry told him that he would be out of town for the night helping Pam pick up her things and that Crystal and the three children would be staying at home. Tommy remained at the bar until it closed, eventually being kicked out at around 2am on the 31st of December 1999. It was then that he made his way to the Harris' home, climbing inside through an open window. The window led to Terry and Crystal's 14-year-old son, Justin's room. Justin woke up and noticed that someone was in his room. Justin, who was blind, believed that it was his sisters and yelled at them to get out before going back to sleep. Tommy then left Justin's room, first checking on the master bedroom and finding Crystal asleep with one of her daughters in her bed. He left them there moving on to the next bedroom where he found 13-year-old Kayleen Harris asleep on the bottom bunk. He lay down beside her and nudged her awake before clamping his hand down on her mouth and pulling out a 12-inch boning knife. He cut off her clothes and began to assault her, but Kayleen managed to break free and shout for help. It was only then that Tommy realised that 10-year-old Crystal Searles Pam's daughter was sleeping on the top bunk. Tommy jumped up and turned on the light so he could see them both. He sliced Kayleen's throat twice before stabbing her 16 times. Crystal Searles begged for her life but Tommy slit her throat too and fled the scene, wiping his fingerprints from the door handle and taking two window screens that he believed had his fingerprints on them. Miraculously, Crystal Searles survived. She believed that everyone in the house must already be dead and managed to walk to a neighbouring house with a severed trachea. She was unable to speak to tell the neighbours what had happened and instead wrote the sentences The Harrises are hurt. Tell them to hurry. Will I live? 
The police were called and Crystal was rushed to the hospital where she was able to give a detailed description of her attacker. Tommy was arrested two days later. He confessed to the murder and voluntarily accompanied the police to the Harris's house, leading them through a reenactment of his crime. He described in detail how he had murdered Kayleen and attempted to murder Crystal. Tommy pled guilty to the attempted murder charge at trial, but did not admit to killing or sexually assaulting Kayleen. The jury deliberated for less than two hours before finding him guilty of murder. With Tommy now behind bars, he began to confess to many other murders that he had committed during the 1970s, 80s and 90s all over the United States. He claimed that he committed his first murder when he was just 15 years old, stating that he was waiting to rob a house when he saw a man molesting a child. Tommy claimed to have killed the man for this reason, although later evidence indicated that no abuse had taken place. The following year, 1980, he said that he had killed a man with an ice pick in Los Angeles. At the age of 21, he claims to have killed 35-year-old Ira Cord and her four-year-old son in Forsyth, Missouri, after he had spent the night with Ira and woke up to find her stealing from his backpack. He said that in 1986 he was working for a towing company and received a call from a sex worker whose car had broken down. He then claimed to have killed her when she declined his suggestion of sex in lieu of payment. On the 1st of May 1987, he claimed to have murdered 27-year-old Suzanne Korch outside of a bar in Niagara Falls. It would take eight years for her remains to be discovered, less than two miles from where she was last seen. Five months later, he said that he had murdered Stephanie Strau near Winnemucca, Nevada. Then, less than a month after this, in November 1987, Tommy was hitchhiking in Illinois when a man by the name of Keith Dardine found Tommy begging on the streets and offered him a hot meal back at his family home. Tommy accepted, but when he arrived at the house, he shot Keith Dardine and mutilated his penis. He then bludgeoned Keith's three-year-old son to death with a hammer and turned on Keith's pregnant wife, Elaine. Tommy attempted to sexually abuse her, but the trauma and shock of witnessing the murders of her son and her husband made her start to go into labour. Elaine gave birth to a daughter in the midst of the carnage, and neither the mother or the baby would survive. Tommy beat them both to death, arranged the bodies of Elaine and her children neatly in her bed, and then left town. The murders of the Dardine family went unsolved for 12 years until Tommy's confession. The following September, Melissa Ann Trembley went missing and her body was later discovered by a railroad track. Melissa had been seen in the car park of a store with a man matching Tommy's appearance shortly before she disappeared. At around the same time, Tommy said that he befriended a mother with a three-year-old son and used them to help him beg for money. The three of them went on a road trip in a black van that Tommy had stolen and neither the mother or child was ever seen again. In December 1988, he claimed to have murdered 51-year-old Kent Allen Lawton by cutting his throat following an argument over marijuana. The following January, he stated that he killed a sex worker in Truckee, Nevada, after discovering that the person he believed to be a woman was actually a man. In May 1989, he had moved on to Oregon, where it is believed that he killed two people in Roseburg. After serving his sentence for the attack on Fabienne Witherspoon, he soon returned to his life of crime. On the 15th of October 1997, he abducted and killed 13-year-old Stephanie Mahaney of Springfield, Missouri. He said that his van broke down and he spotted Stephanie playing outside. Her body was later found in a farm pond. He was indicted but never tried for this murder. Tommy also claims responsibility for the murders of Deborah Harris and her eight-year-old daughter, Amria Halliburton, in Gibson County, Tennessee in April 1999. 
Just two weeks later, he strangled nine-year-old Mary Beatrice Perez after abducting her from a fair with her body later being found near a drainage ditch. He was later convicted of this crime. In May 1999, he sexually assaulted and murdered 13-year-old Haley McCone, stealing her bicycle and then selling it for $20. Two months later, he abducted 14-year-old Bobby Lynn Wooford from a shop near Kingfisher in Oklahoma. He sexually assaulted the young girl and then shot her as she was trying to escape. Her body wasn't found until four months later and Tommy was linked to this crime through a pair of earrings that he removed from Bobby's body. On the 30th of December 1999, the day before Kayleen's murder and the attempted murder of Crystal, Tommy said that he was responsible for the murders of Danny and Kathy Freeman who were found dead in their burning mobile home in Welch, Oklahoma. Their daughter, Ashley, and her friend, Loria Bible, have never been seen since. Tommy claims that he killed the two girls and dumped their bodies near Red River on the border between Oklahoma and Texas. Some of the murders that Tommy admitted to have been difficult to verify, or at times his confession was inconsistent with the evidence that the police have. This was perhaps due to his excessive drug use and alcohol dependence at the time. However, investigators believe that they have confirmed the details of at least 22 murders that Tommy committed. Tommy himself claimed that he did not know how many people he had killed, but speculation hints that it could be as high as 70. He lacked any remorse or guilt for his crimes, stating that he liked to watch his victims' eyes fade and that he didn't want children to live through the pain that he himself had lived through. He was executed by lethal injection in Texas on the 3rd of April 2014. That concludes today's case about Tommy Lynn Sells. Please add any comments down below. Thank you for listening to The Crime Reel. Stay safe. Goodbye. Psst. There is a book written by Diane Fanning called Through the Window. It's all about the Tommy Lynn Sells story. Goodbye.